Okay. Thank you, everybody. Welcome to today to the uh, Unified Consortium Seminar Series. Uh, today, our speaker is Jin Tan, a senior engineer at the National Renewable Energy Laboratory. Uh, she'll be talking about the comparative stability analysis of grid forming and grid following inverters in low inertia power systems. So I'm going to turn it over to Jin. Thank you for giving the presentation today. All right. Uh, could you hear me okay? Just want to double check. All right. Sounds good. Uh, so first, I would like to appreciate Ben uh, for inviting me to give this presentation. Um, it's an honor to be here uh, to talk about our preliminary uh, results or the studies uh, on this topic. So today, uh, we will be mainly focused on the grid stability analysis uh, in terms of while we are using the grid forming and the grid falling for those no inertia power systems. I will just get it started. So in today's presentation, I will first uh, introduce a little bit of background. And followed by that, I will talk about the approach we are using here. It's a super straightforward approach, nothing fancier, but I think they are also important to talk about how we use it, kind of like provide a, a, a thought on how to resolving the problems. So next, uh, we will be more focusing on uh, while we are trying to address those stability issues, uh, there are always some questions in our mind. Uh, for example, like uh, could the IBR introduce any new system level oscillations? And how much IBR could we integrate into the grid by using the grid forming? And um, so we will talk about those things. And we also will touch a little bit about uh, what's the difference between the 100% of the grid of forming and the one from the 100% of the grid of following? Um, at the the end of the presentation, I also want to share a little bit about our um, uh, studies about while we are towards into the 100% penetration of the IBRs. What are the important uh, technologies, what are the important uh, simulation technologies we are trying to focus on a uh, very brief uh, overview about some existing work our team, our group is uh, uh, and Enrel is working on. At the last, I will give you a summary and a little bit of future work. All right, so um, you probably already see this slide a couple of times. Uh, I borrowed it from Ben, and uh, I think all the Iranians love this slide. So if you allow me, so I would like to use it again to set the stage of two key information. That is very important uh, for the grid stability. So first, uh, in this figure, the uh, horizontal axis represents the grid size. The vertical uh, axis is the wind and the solar penetration level. The gray cycle is the annual energy. The right square is the instantaneous power. And so there are two things I want to emphasize. So when we see even a very moderate level of the wind and the solar on an annual basis, it can lead to a very high instantaneous penetration. So this can bring the challenges in many ways, such as low inertia, weak grade, uh, low grade strength, fault behavior from the <clears throat> fault behavior of from the inverters. So how to maintain those grid stability um, is uh, is very challenging. So we are facing now uh, kind of like a lot of the things we are facing now is for the island grade that we will be facing soon for the interconnection grade. So the grid stability is a key issue here. So second thing is we probably already found that we can achieve 100% renewables for some small island. And for some larger island, um, it's not just a simple copy and paste so you can redo the 100%. So for example, um, in 2019, the KUC already can run the grid for 25 minutes uh, using 100% renewables. 
So it's very, it was a very encouraging news that if we dig into that a little bit more, so we will realize that actually the mix for that period was 80% um, of the PV, 10% uh, of the biomass and 10% of the hydro. That means if the grid planner, if they don't have the, that resources on, uh, on their grid, so that, that means they need to figure out some other way to do it. I just want to use it as an example to emphasize that uh, the grid are all different and they are all unique. That requires the system operator planners to conduct a detailed integration study based on their own resources, based on their existing or uh, uh, future electrical network uh, structures or the generation and the transmission technology. So back to today's topic, the unified the grid forming water. Actually, grid forming, many researchers already mentioned that this concept for the grid forming actually is not new. It has been introduced for many years for microgrid, for island grid, and for the stability of the grid forming and the grid following. <clears throat> uh, they already been started a lot. However, um, for those new te generation technologies, when we use it for large grid for the interconnected transmission network. So we, 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 we need to revisit those stability issues from a different angle. That is the system level angle from the grid stability or from the operational perspective. So in today's presentation, I'm going to share some thoughts, initial thoughts and studies from this angle. So today we are going to talk about the grid stability. The traditional power system stability problem has been divided into different types, like uh, you're probably already familiar with the angle stability, voltage stability, frequency stability. So today, a new type of the stability issues caused by the renewables have been observed, as I'm showing in this figure. So just uh, take the 2009 uh, Texas uh, event for example so there is a wind power plant uh, it in introduced 20 hertz oscillations happened in the south texas as the oscillation amplitude uh, keep uh, uh, continue to increase it eventually caused the turbine trips and the damage of the protection circuit so the later study shows that um, there is a new uh, sub synchronous oscillations which we call the subsynchronous control interactive uh, uh, events caused by the interaction between the power electronics control devices and the uh, series compensative uh, system. So as you can see in this figure, so in the recent years, more and more SSCI type of the events have happened along with increasing the renewables. So with the numbers, actually this number keep growing in recent years. Um, the troublemaker could be the PV, we found it could be the wind, could be the battery, could be the HVDC, they are all power electronics. It could happen anywhere in the world, like in the United States, in China, in Australia, we all found that. So in general, when we test the IBR of line separately, for most of the time we did that, there is no stability problem based on the device testing. However, when we connect it to the power grid, sometimes some hidden interactions could gradually emerge, but not all of them will be exposed at one time. Sometimes those hidden instability only can be triggered by a specific operational conditions. This brings the challenge to the pre-identify those risks. So it all, but using these slides also tell us it's not enough. You will, oh, we only understand the controls of the IBRs alone or just based on the single machine infinite bus. And gradually we realize that their interaction with the grid will become more essential in the future. Um, next, I just want to talk about um, the most straightforward way or the straightforward approach First is the time dissemination. Another is the theoretical analysis, nothing fancy. Uh, we use that in the planning stage or in the, in the planning study. So they all model-based approach 
the model accuracy is also very important for the time domain simulation. It, it, no, no, no need to see. It's it actually it's very clearly can show you the potential instability, and um, and but the, the some kind of like this. If you take a look at that, sometimes and the time domain simulation more like a black box. You apply a disturbance here, and you see okay it's stable, not stable, but still you don't know what happened there. What's the mechanism of those instabilities? And sometimes we need to use the with more IBRs integrated into the uh, into the grid. Uh, we find that those controls need to be control dynamics need to be better captured in the EMT type of simulation. But however, to run those EMT simulations is super slow. How to um, uh, encounter uh, how to uh, solve those type of problems is also a very challenging. But when we take a look at it, what we call the theoretical analysis, there are a lot of methods, uh, including the small signal analysis. There are some other other methods as well. So it can help to us to review the mechanisms of the potential instabilities. It could be very helpful for uh, designing control parameters, but still we found that it's really hard to develop those mathematical equations for the really large power power grade and try to address those problems for the real systems. So what should we do for the next? How can we better combine those things together? So basically we don't want to just use one method and it can tackle all the problems at one, at one time. We need to do it step by step. So if you allow me, so I would like to start with a study about the Hawaii Island. Then you may already know that the Hawaii Island has a very ambitious goal to achieve that 100% renewable by 2045. Um, so this position Hawaii to leading the test of that for the energy transition for the whole nations in the United States. So we are very lucky to get a chance to work with the Hawaii Electric and the, the KIUC, which is the utility for the Kauai Island in the Hawaii. And we try to understand the role of the grid forming in their system. So take the Maui 100 uh, study, for example. The first question uh, we are asking us is, uh, if we could use the grid forming water to stabilize the system. So what's the difference between the grid following and the grid forming in, term, in terms of to stabilize a grid? Um, so the first, we just uh, Adopt the most uh, straightforward way to use the time domain simulation. The first thing is we need to develop that large scale EMT model for the entire Maui grid uh, in the PSCAD, in an EMT simulation environment. In order to speed up this EMT simulation, we partitioning this grid into seven areas for the parallel simulation and try to understand the importance of the EMT simulation. We also conduct a comparison study between the PSSE and the PSCAD simulation for a lot of scenarios. So uh, today, due to the limited time, I just want to give you two examples. Um, so the first example is that we want to show the Maui grid, actually they can operate the 100% grid of following plus synchronous condenser uh, for their grid. So as you can see here, uh, while we are taking the now you grid, we gradually replace the synchronous uh, generators with the grid following voters. Uh, while it reached to a certain level, we even kind of like uh, convert the synchronous generators to the synchronous condensers and use all the grid following to generate the power there. So what we found here uh, is, so first grid following actually can help with the synchronous condenser can help to stabilize the uh, Maui grid. Uh, second, if we further replace 30 megawatts grid forming with the grid forming here, actually grid forming can provide a better damping, can provide a better frequency performance as you can see here. So two, uh, this is uh, one a message we want to send out. So it looks like a grid forming is performing a little bit better than the grid following. 
Another thing is regarding the simulation tools. If you are saying, so we have some uh, dash uh, uh, line here representing the PSSE's performance. Actually, while the inertia has been dropped really low, when we try to use the PSSE to simulate these specific scenarios, it's very hard to make it running. So it just stops somewhere due to the numerical instability. Uh, so our EMT simulation can capture all those things. This is the two uh, information uh, message we want to send out for this example. Another thing on to get, get, make us get excited is about this zero inertia cases. So we further push the okay the, the whole grid with without the synchronous condenser, and we realize that just with 30 megawatt grid forming, actually the market grid is still unstable. So we need to increase the capacities here. When we increase it to 60%, uh, we found that, oh, okay, the market grid has been stabilized. Uh, what does that mean? So that means the market grid actually is able to operating with 100%, not only 100% renewables, it's also a 100% IBR case, at least in this simulation. So in Maui cases, we can use the, it looks like we can use the grid forming water. Uh, and it's certainly very helpful. It should also show us that the capacity of the grid forming matters and the control also matters. Probably the operating points are also matters. So we couldn't help asking ourselves when different uh, factors come, come together, so have so many combinations, what are the limitations? What's the, where are the stability margins by using the grid forming? So that's the next question we would like to talk about. Uh, but the thing is, so for that type of questions, because of too many things you need to go over, it's a little bit hard to use the EMT simulations to go over all the scenarios. So we need to come back to some fundamental questions it's very important to simulate and capture those dynamics, uh, uh, interactive dynamics between the IBR and the synchronous generator. And meanwhile, we also think uh, it's also very important to understand uh, when we see some, especially when we in, during the time domain simulation, when we see some oscillation uh, or instability phenomena, we need to know how it looks what uh, we also uh, we also want to know uh, what what it is. So who caused the problem? How should we mitigate it? Uh, could we design something to better avoid it? Um, definitely, time domain simulation can show the problem and not directly pinpoint the root cause of those uh, instability issues. That's why we keep asking some questions like what. Uh, I listed here. Those are very fundamental questions. Like um, in the large scale box system, uh, what's the fundamental impact of those IBRs of the penetration level keep increasing? Will IBR introduce any new system level stability issues, which we haven't seen before in the traditional synchronous generator dominant grid? And how does those IBRs interact with the rest of the synchronous generators if we still have some online. And, and also for those new stability issues, if there is any. So what's the key and the critical parameters we need to pay attention to while we are designing the uh, inverters or while we are tuning the parameters uh, when we connect to a very a specific grade? And how do we determine those generation mix of the grid forming, grid falling, what to the control we need to, to adopt there? And basically, also in order to answer all those questions, we need to understand some theoretical uh, 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 reasons behind it. Mm, so next thing is, um, I would like to talk about uh, the approach we adopt here. There will be more, a lot of uh, some other approaches to address those theoretical uh, questions. And the, the approach we adopt here is using the small signal modeling and analysis approach. So we start with a very simple 
uh, tester system, including one synchronous generator, one inverter, it connects with a transmission line, and it serves the load over here. So uh, we will, this is a very typical procedure and method for the small signal uh, uh, stability analysis. I won't go over the details, but the key things here is we need to derive these state-based models of the whole system first. We conduct the eigenvalue analysis based on this A matrix. So based on the eigenvalue, if the, it has a negative real part, it means the, the system is stable. If it has a positive real part, it's unstable. So the, those are all the basics. So in this study, uh, I released uh, the models we are using here. So we compare three different IDR controls, which is a, a typical uh, grid following without and with the droop. And another one is a typical droop control based grid forming inverters here. I don't go over the details about the modeling part to save some time. Eventually, uh, we kind of like build this modularized the small signal model of the entire system. And the each generation units has been built based on their individual reference uh, frames. And all the uh, control dynamics has been uh, considered under this framework. And uh, we just use this model. So this is a more general model. It's not only uh, fit for the two generation system, it also can be used for a fairly larger system. Just want to let you know. But the, the first thing is we still want to start with a simple system. Next, I will talk about our scenarios. So as I mentioned earlier, each grid are very unique. Then how do we determine or understand the fundamental question better? So just like many uh, years ago, uh, what our senior power system engineers did for our grid, we always like to start with some start with some basic basics. So we start with this very simple representation of the transmission system with two generation, uh, two machine system. Uh, left is synchronous generator, right one is the IDR. They supply a load through two transmission lines. D1 and the D2 represent the length of the transmission line. Why this is important? Because even if it's a very simple one, it can represent the two typical export power problems in the transmission system. One is when the D1, one is when the D1 is super long and the D2 is very short. Imagine that. So that represents uh, the IDR are located in the load center. So this could be a case that is similar to the California area. So they have a lot of rooftop PV or utilities, even utility scale PV uh, in local, but sometimes they still need the significant in the hydro from the north. And another situation is when the IBR is far away from the load center. This is more like a case like the maybe aircraft. Most of the wind are located in the northwest, but you still need to tra uh, transfer or export those power, uh, significant amount of power uh, to the southeast where the big city is located. There will be a lot of that type of uh, examples. So, this is just a simplified version of those two typical scenarios. And this is what I call the grid topology here. And so this is the first dimension. We want to analyze the whole stories by using four dimensions here. This is the first one. Mm. The second dimension is the control technology. So under the... Uh, the this one you probably already know, we pick up three different uh, controls here. So we want to understand the difference. We want to understand the pros and cons of using the different type of control strategies or structures here. Mm, the third one is the grid strength. This is very important or urgent problem for the future grid. We already know it's trickier to maintain the grid stability in a weak grid, no matter for the grid of forming or the, for the synchronous, even for the synchronous generator. So how, how about with the grid of forming border? Is there any limitation for the grid forming? So this is something we are interested in, learn, uh, in, in learning something there. The fourth one is the renewable penetration level. 
So we want to understand while we are pushing the IBR to a higher penetration level with different technologies, with different top uh, grades, and with a different grade strength, how, how much we can push, push the IBR. Mm. So this is the four dimensions uh, we are going to explore in the next uh, few slides. So the first important question we ask ourselves is, can IBR introduce any system level oscillation modes? So those modes are not the local modes. They should be the system level modes. Uh, here, just an example, I use the case 1.01, which is the grid of following inverter without the juke. So how do we conduct those studies? Uh, very similar to what I mentioned before, uh, we need to run the eigenvalue analysis and uh, try to find the, five, uh, the, the relevant oscillation modes based on the frequency and the damping ratio. So after we got those eigenvalues, we can calculate the frequency and the damping ratio. And uh, based on the uh, participation factors, we also can identify each mode who is the uh, uh, who is the key uh, players for those oscillation modes? I will give you an example. For example, for, for this one, um, uh, oh, first, uh, we probably are, can, can find that uh, for this case, we can find the five typical oscillation modes here. And some of them are thinking as local modes. They have a very low frequency below five hertz, it's fine. And some of them actually, they have some new oscillation coupling oscillation modes appear. So basically, if we take a look at the participation factor, how to take a look at those things. If, if you see some bars showing in this range, which means the signal generator is playing a role there. If you see some bars here, so which means the inverter, uh, some of the state uh, variables of the, from the inverter also play a role here. And also this is the, some coupling from the uh, network and node. So basically, you probably can see there are some coupling modes appear. So while we are having the IBRs, uh, gradually having IBRs into this system. This is the first thing. Second thing is uh, we want to see uh, if you do a deeper dive about those oscillation modes, you definitely could find out, for example, for these 23 hertz oscillations, it's highly related to the uh, inverter's PL. Where it could be trouble, we will see. So at this moment, we just want to get a general idea uh, what's the, the new mode here. So next, uh, we just uh, summarize. So for the different type of the uh, tech, um, IBR technologies, one is the grid of following, one is the grid of uh, following with the group, without group, and the grid forming. What do we find here? Uh, several key takeaway messages. So one is um, they do have some common oscillation modes. Uh, uh, even some of them are the coupling modes. So it's very normal. Uh, we call it the uh, it, one is with very high frequency. One is kind of like still not very high frequency, but they are very similar to each other. And the the second thing is we found is. So sometimes they have some unique oscillation modes, like uh, the grid of following, they always have this inverter PIL uh, related oscillation modes. And for the uh, grid of forming, actually there is a new mode appeared. This is something uh, I, I haven't seen before, uh, maybe someone of you already knew that. So uh, this is a new oscillation, we call it a new oscillation mode uh, with the droop control. We find it, uh, it's here and the frequency actually it's really low. But were those things become a troublemaker or not? We don't know yet. We need to conduct more studies, try to figure it out. So next question is how much IBR we can integrate it to the grid by use, use the grid forming. Use the same uh, method. What do we have found here? So uh, if you still remember, so how uh, we, we still take this case 1.1 as an example, and then later we will lay out all the study results. So it's easier for us to digest a lot of information uh, uh, step by step. Um, so we conduct the, the signal stability analysis for this case 1.1. There are two dimensions we first play with. One is the 
we gradually increase the transmission line, uh, the length of the transmission line. In general, some fundamentals, so the grid gets weaker with a longer transmission line, or grid gets stronger with more transmission line or high voltage level. So those things we all tried out, but here we just show one case uh, to give you an idea what we have done here. So normal, basically this is showing the grid strength becomes weaker and the vertical axis is showing the IVR penetration level. So we, we gradually push it from the zero to 100 uh, for one different condition. So this is how it looks like. And the green bar represents a stable case and the right uh, area represents it's unstable. So if we take a look at take a look at the date bar, it represents uh, the date um, grade. While it's reaching around the 80%, it starts to have becomes unstable. If you, you took, took like the, the whole picture of this grade, that this becomes more interesting. So there, there are several informations we extract from here. So the first thing is if you look at the date bar, that's represent. The inverter with the PL, actually they can work in the 100% IBR grid. It depends on your grid strength, uh, it depends on your control. Second, the second information here is, so while the weaker the grid is, actually the harder the grid is uh, to stay the stable. This is a very kind of like a common sense now. And so, but we also prove this. So for example, you, you pick up uh, one penetration level, and you take a look. So when you are gradually increase the uh, grid strength, uh, sorry, decrease the grid strength, increase the length, it becomes uh, more and more unstable. Uh, second, uh, the third thing is what cause, the next question is what cause those unstable? Can we fix it? Can we make it a little bit better? Mm, so this need a kind of like a deep dive about those things by using the eigenvalue analysis. So this is just we want to show examples. For example, we grab this case and we uh, in the eigenvalue plot, we gradually increase the penetration level from zero to 100. We could see all the eigenvalues they are moving. Mode one is moving like this, mode two moving to the left. But the most critical one is this mode three. We, we call it here because it's moving from the negative part to the positive part, which means it makes the system unstable. So we need to, if you still remember, actually this mode three is a 20 hertz weak coupling mode. It's also associated with the PL and it has the dominant impact on the stability while the penetration level changes. So basically this gave you an example how to find out the problem for those instability uh, Issues uh, by using the uh, by using the small signal analysis techn techniques. The next thing is so normally for the small signal, you know, this is a linearized methodology, so we don't fully trust it. So that's why we also conduct the EMT variation uh, verifications for uh, for this case. So basically, we build up exactly the same EMT model. And then we run the dynamic simulation uh, for the different scenarios. Uh, while it's A1, we disturb it with a small disturbance, we can see the frequency. The system can go back to the stable, but if when the system is running, when you push the penetration level to a higher level, like this at the, B, at the B1, actually after you disturb the system, it will go crazy. This is just to show the whole uh, uh, um, study framework we adopted here. For each of the, uh, the cases, we did the similar thing, but we want to uh, show it one by one, just to give us a little bit of confidence. What, what we got from the small signal analysis, actually it also makes sense in the EMT time domain simulation. Here we go. So. What, what, what we really want to study here is try to understand what the difference between the different control uh, strategies. Um, several things, if you remember how to uh, take a look at those, those uh, pictures. So then it's very easy now. And so first thing we, we got is 
no matter for which type of a control strategies, normally the weaker the grid is, the harder to push the penetration level. This is the first thing. Second thing, if we compare the case 1.2, uh, the, the case with droop or without droop, we can easily find actually droop control is very uh, effective to improve the stability margin of the grid following inverter. And another thing, it's very interesting thing for the grid forming border. This is something we got very surprised when we first see this, those results. Because we found that when the grid forming actually is located at the node center, uh, it's easier to achieve the 100% uh, uh, than the relatively high renewable cases. Um, and so this, this is something we feel like uh, we need to dig into it a little bit and try to understand what happened here. So we this get back to the eigenvalue analysis again. So this figure shows the eigenvalue trajectories. You will find actually that mode eight becomes very crazy. So when we gradually increase the penetration level for this case under this great strength, and we see the eigenvalue start to move from unstable to stable, then unstable and stable again. To verify that, we also um, do the EMT type of simulation and try to see does that really uh, uh, does that tell a true story uh, from this uh, eigenvalue analysis. So it definitely see the, the, the Actually, the time domain simulation aligned with what we found from the eigenvalue analysis. This surprised us. And we also dig in what happened here. What will make this uh, very tricky um, for the greater forming border? And then later, we realized that actually in this system, uh, there, the new coupling oscillation mode between the synchronous generator and the greater forming uh, mode it has the dominant impact on these stability problems when the uh, penetration level changes. And uh, also we can find that this critical one uh, has the frequency equal to several things I want to mention. One is the frequency is about 0.93 Hertz uh, at a 75% IBR penetration level. It's very similar to the traditional uh, low frequency oscillation in the traditional power grade. So that implies that, so in the future, you may see some low frequency oscillations, but you couldn't just directly say, hey, this is oscillation caused by the synchronous generator. It still could be caused by the synchronous generator with the um, controls of the grid forming. This is the one thing I think it's pretty interesting uh, to find. The second thing is, uh, I think, uh, well, we uh, uh, look at th uh, this figure, we, we find that, uh, sorry, I forgot what I want to mention this, the second point. Um, okay, it will come back later, I think. Um, uh, okay, so this is for the first case, if you still remember, oh, okay, oh, I remember. So if, if we think about uh, what happened here, so why they have a very, when the penetration level is super low, why there is still the problem here? So basically this is kind of like an implied that when your synchronous generator is really far away from the, your load center, so that oscillation mode will also affect the export compatibility of the, that far away synchronous generator. So that could cause some uh, potential issues. I don't know if that's true, but uh, this is something based on this study. So we need to look into more uh, in the future uh, study in a real system. Uh, next one is, so we just uh, take a look at when the IBR is located in the local, what are the potential stability instabilities uh, will happen there. So next uh, we take a look at when the IBR are far away from the load center, what happened here? So we, we will find actually, you probably already find there are very similar uh, results, results we got here. So one is the weaker the grid is, the harder the grid to stay stable. Second is if you compare those two, still the droop control is, uh, can improve the stability margin of the, of the grid forming, following. 
The third one is, so if you compare three of them, the grid forming definitely has a larger stability margin. But the interesting thing is when we keep pushing the uh, grid strength, uh, so we still can see there will be some instability issues uh, here. So which means actually grid forming, definitely they have a limitation there. It depends on how you choose to study it. Um, so next thing is I would like to take you to this page and uh, compare it vertically. So this is uh, from a system perspective. So in general, when the grid following uh, gets harder to export power through a trans long transmission line, no matter with and without the juke, if you compare those two. So for this one, if it's IBR located in no code, it can push it much higher. But if it, you need IBR to transport a lot of power, um, probably you, you need a pretty strong uh, system because you, you couldn't do that, especially for the grid fall following. Um, another thing is for the grid forming. So when the distance be becomes longer, there is also the limitation as I mentioned before. And uh, troop control is also helpful. And the grid forming uh, may not be performed as good as the grid following in some cases, if you compare the case 1.2 and the case 1.3, due to the interactive dynamics between uh, with the synchronous generator. And another thing I just want to mention that, so from the grid of forming, for the grid forming inverter, actually the instability mechanisms can be very different uh, from case to case or when they are located in the load center or far away from the load center. Yeah. Okay. So that's all the work we uh, or the observations we got purely from the small signal analysis. I need to mention that actually small signal analysis is not the full picture, but it's important. If it's small signal, uh, it's more disturbance instable then which means uh, the system definitely will feel when, when you run it. But when small signal analysis stability is okay, that doesn't mean the system is okay. So this page just want to show you that uh, what's the difference between the 100% degree of forming uh, and the 100% degree of following. So this is a very preliminary study for the transient stability we have done in the past. Uh, basically, we grab uh, one case under the 75% renewable penetration, and uh, we grab those cases actually it's with 100% uh, uh, stability stable. And we make them have the same small signal stability margin, and we run a, a, a fault. So basically doing the time domain simulation to try to identify the critical clearing time for the each cases. So there are several things I want to mention that it shows first with the same uh, stability, small signal stability margin, actually transient stability margin for different inverters are different, which means definitely the performance are quite different. Uh, for those 100% case without a droop, those are CCTs too short. And you even couldn't bear it for your power grid. And another thing I want to mention that if you compare different uh, uh, technologies, definitely grid forming will be helpful uh, in terms of uh, improving the transient stability margin. And when, if you compare scenario one uh, with the scenario, scenario two, so when the IBR are located at uh, far away places, it's trickier to maintain the transient stability as well. So for the interconnection grid study, how should we export the IBR power from one location to another is more challenging than we use uh, the IBR locally. So that's something we find fun there. Okay, so uh, I, I, I already shared a lot of uh, kind of like, uh, research details about those things. So I think I will switch uh, gear here and uh, try to quickly go over some related work uh, and share some thoughts about uh, some high level stuff. So while we are moving towards to the 100% penetration of the IBRs, uh, there are a lot of uh, 
kind of like the technologies, methodologies we could use, like what, what we are showing here. You could use a gray forming plus synchronous condenser, gray forming synchronous plus condenser, or just use the gray forming with the grid following. So while we are uh, uh, doing some preliminary analysis for the different uh, uh, generation technologies, there are something we want to mention that we use a similar way to do it, but the one thing just uh, pop out is, so one thing uh, we, we found that um, the small signal stability definitely will be impacted with the different penetration of the gray forming gray following. And even when we are using the synchronous condensers, actually there will be some additional interact interactive modes with the synchronous condensers. Uh, we identify that through the model analysis. We need to be careful about that uh, in the future. A study or the applications that not that mean have the synchronous condenser, uh, you will have that you will have a stable grade. Another thing is also similar, the transfer stability also can be enhanced with the increase in the grid forming, but uh, still that uh, stability issues we need to be careful about that. Um, I mentioned this just want to uh, give you a general idea actually, generation technology. Technologies matters a lot for those studies. And another angle is about the control technology perspective. So basically, as you may know, for the grid forming, um, they they have a lot of different type of the control structures, and we all can always can develop something more, something better. So the point is, so while we are increasing the penetration level of the HPP, how can we? Oh, now the HP, the IBRs, how can we better utilize the grid forming? How can we better design it? So in this study, this is just, a, um, I want to use this figure just want to show you, even when the system is operating with the grid forming mode, if we are using it in a different way, it could give you the different results. Sometimes it could be your system can reach 70%, uh, but when you change another operation mode, for your H, for your IBRs, even they are all grid forming, they, they can give you a different result. So we need to pay attention to the variance of the control. Next thing I want to mention is uh, to, when we are towards the 100%, I think I mentioned this before about those simulation technologies. There are a lot of discussion in this area. Uh, we have a different type of the simulation tool, Fizzer domain EMT. Um, I, I guess I want to emphasize maybe two points. One is, uh, um, so how to accurately capture the IBR dynamics in both Fizzer and EMT simulation tools, it's very important. So a lot of the people like Ivory, they are uh, developing the new models in the Fizzer domain, try to capture those IBR, that's a one way to go. Another way is, uh, we want to use the EMT tool to do this type of study. So we also, but we have the hurdle here, yeah. then how do we better? Yes. Okay. Um, then how can we better, uh, how, how, how can we better effectively conduct the EMT simulation? So uh, that's another uh, thing we need to consider about that. We use a piece CAD, we can do the parallel simulation, use that tool. And uh, also at Enro, uh, we are also trying to develop some in-house tool, uh, try to uh, develop those breakthrough EMT simulation framework and uh, speed up the whole uh, EMT type of simulation. And so in the future, we hope some new technology, simulation technology, those EMT models, EMT simulation, not only can only can be used for the small scale system, it also can be used for the large scale system. Um, so I also include a little bit, uh, so there is another important thing we need to consider. So sometimes there is no need to do the full EMT for the whole grid. So that, then we can switch the idea to another direction. Basically that means we need to have a more intelligent tool to tell us when to use which type of a model, where do we use those, those models and how can we use those tools? So this is what we call it. Sometimes we are also considering we should develop the hybrid of Caesar domain and the EMT type of the 
simulation tool and uh, uh, use some um, kind of like idea to help us to intelligently to determine where we should uh, build the model in the feather, where we should build the model in the EMT area. So it can uh, increase uh, the computational time, meanwhile also achieve the fidelity of the whole grid integration study. So this is another thing I want to mention. Uh, the last piece uh, is about uh, we, we think while we are this, uh, while we are uh, moving uh, forward, uh, modeling is also a very important part, as I just mentioned. And also, we need a lot of researchers, um, uh, academia people, industry people, and uh, need to understand a lot of things much better. So that needs a lot of practice, a lot of uh, effort from the different researchers, need a lot of education, need a lot of inter uh, iteration. The iteration is like the, what the Unify is doing right now, help us each other to understand those things a little bit better. Um, so here, I just want to share something we are working on recently. Uh, so we also develop a free MT model of a, we call it a 240 bus WAC test system in PSCAD and also in the PERI-EMT that what we are developing there. Uh, the purpose is we want to use it uh, for the researcher or utility try to understand the challenges of the grid operation with high renewable penetration. And the work we have done here is we also uh, partition it into eight areas, build the whole simplified work system. Um, we use this work system, the, the, the beauty of this work system is it can capture the, the main dynamics of the whole wax system, including those inter-area oscillation modes. So it's an inter interconnected level uh, transmission system uh, you can use for your study. And another thing is, so, so far we, we only use the generic model to represent the IBR. So later, if you want to test out, hey, if we have the new IBR controls, I want to know how it performs in a large, large grid. So this is something maybe we can consider to use in the future. I just feel like uh, want to share this with a broader group because I think this will also will be helpful for validating uh, some of the uh, grid uh, grid level controller of the IBR in the, if you if there is a need. And we also put this. Uh, in this kind of model, in, this will be the uh, free open source test system. We will put that in our high renewable test case repository. And uh, uh, it are, we also have one one match TSSC model for this test system. And even we have a, a kind of like a longer term scheduling model for this test system. Basically, we develop a set uh, of the test system for, 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 for this mini WAC and hopefully it will be helpful for uh, other uh, researchers and uh, students. All right, so uh, that's, uh, uh, this is the end of my presentation. Uh, again, I would like uh, to give a summary about uh, what we are talking about today. So first, uh, we can see that both grid forming, grid following can achieve 100% renewable under some very specific hypothesis in terms of the small signal stability. In general, the weaker the grid is, the harder it is to stay stable. And if we compare to grid forming, following with and without juke, grid forming definitely has a larger stability margin, but it still has some uh, instability issues in terms of the small signal while we are pushing the envelope of the grid strength. And it also has very unique uh, instability issues, uh, as we are mentioning, that uh, uh, interactive uh, oscillation mode. And so for the grid following, I think uh, uh, this is well known. So tube control is good. And the PL always cause a problem. And for the grid forming, I think uh, we, we need to have a, be careful about those instability reasons because it can be very different. Uh, in the different grade uh, based on the different system conf um, configurations. And also uh, we found that actually if we want to export uh, from 
the power from a, a, another far away location, we need to be very sophisticated to design the IBR to see how can we improve that limitations there. Um, okay, so that's pretty much about this. And so the, for the next, uh, the future work, uh, I, I mean, as I'm actually, I kind of like I mentioned that earlier. Uh, so basically control will play a very important role there. How do we better uh, design the control? Tune the control parameters were important. And also how do we use IBR to support long distance power transmission limitations? And uh, this is something we want to have a better understanding in terms of the uh, system level grade stability. And also in terms of different types of stability, as we are mainly focusing on the small signal in this case, but basically there are different types of stability issues we haven't uh, touched on. So we need to understand what's the role of the grid forming there and how can we mitigate them if there is any. And uh, another thing is how do we generate some of the funding uh, to the re realistic system if we are doing a lot of theoretical analysis. So in my mind, so there will be a lot of iterations. We will grab a lot of information from industry people and try to help them to uh, address those problems. Like uh, if we find an oscillation event uh, in island grid or interconnection, that's a good opportunity for us and try to uh, help them to understand what's the, um, the underlying uh, reasons behind the, behind the curtain, what's the main problems there. So uh, I, again, I, I, I think it's very important to understand those fundamental dynamic stabilities uh, because that can help us to better design our controls uh, design our systems, help us to build out our uh, infrastructures of the IBRs in the future. And also um, here, it's very simple. What think single generator one IBR? Actually, IBR is not a single unit. What's the interaction between uh, all of those IBRs? Where it be a local problem or system problem? I think those are all very, the, the open questions we need to explore for the next. So this is the, uh, so at the last, I just want to conclude that, um, so how could we get a understanding of the stability issues? So this is, a, uh, in China, we have a very famous proof, which called the blindment touch and anything. So basically we are like those people. Um, well, we grab the, 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 the nose of the elephant, we thought they probably elephant is like a snake. Well, the people who touch the, the ears of the elephant, they may think that the elephant looks like a fan. It's a fan. So for us, while we are exploring the stability issues of the IBRs, we are like exactly like those people, but we need to put all the pieces together so we will can have a better understanding about the uh, stability issues. And I believe if all of us are contributing to this unify, and we can do it better and better. All right. Uh, at the last, but not the least, I'd like to uh, uh, thank my key contributors, Li Zhi, Xiao Lan, Andy, and Bing for their uh, uh, the, 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 the fantastic work I have already presented in, in this presentation. And I also want to uh, appreciate the support from the DOE city office under many projects. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, also thank the team. Uh, that this is our Midas team. Uh, who was uh, working with us uh, for the past three years and working on those uh, fantastic topics. All right, that's the end of my presentation. Uh, thank you all for, for your time. And so I will take questions from here. Okay, thank you.